As long as there have been thieves, there's been a need for locks. Padlocks date back to Roman times and were likely first used to protect cargo and transit. Thousands of years later, the padlock continues to keep burglars at bay. The modern padlock's strongest feature is its lock body. The process begins with a stack of 24 steel plates that are laminated together. The same technology that's used to make doors for bank vaults. A punch press cuts and shapes pieces of steel into caps that will be riveted to the lock bodies. The rivets tumble down a feeder. While below, an operator places a lock body and a cap into a fixture. A powerful press then drives the rivets into the assembly, securing the top cap to the lock body. At another station, cutters contour steel rods so they'll fit into the lock body's holes, while lubricant keeps things cool. The finished rods are now ready to be shaped. Workers load them into a form press. This machine bends the steel as easily as you could bend a pipe cleaner to make a U-shaped shackle. Then the shackles roll into a furnace for tempering, a process that makes the steel even stronger. After a little more machining, the shackle is ready to be installed. This shackle will need to move up and down as the lock is opened and closed. And that's where these ball bearings come in. Two of them are slipped into the lock cavity. Lubricant gel aids the process. Workers use it to grease the inside of the lock while they push the ball bearings to either side of the cavity. A cylinder extension is inserted between the ball bearings. Then a protective casing and bumper slide over the lock. Now it's time for final assembly. A machine loads copper-plated shells onto mandrels. Plugs, pins, and springs funnel into the lock assembly station. A device installs pins and springs in a lock shell. The shell slides onto a brass plug. A key-shaped groove is cut into the plug, transforming it into a lock cylinder. A carbide cutter notches the matching keys. There are tens of thousands of key profiles. This sorting station holds just a few. The keys and lock cylinders are all numbered. This worker matches them up, making sure there are two keys for each lock. She selects a padlock and pushes one of the lock cylinders into it. Then she tops it off with a retention plate. A machine press fits the plate to the bottom of the padlock. This secures the lock cylinder. A spring for the shackle is inserted, and the bottom cap goes on next. Then the entire assembly is riveted together. Each key is tested to make sure it matches. A computerized system opens and closes a randomly selected padlock thousands of times to make sure it's up to the job. The lock also has to hold up to force. Weights are dropped to replicate a hammer blow, and the padlock withstands the strike. This day's work is done. It's time for the folks at the factory to lock up for the day.